I've been wearing barefoot shoes for well over two years, so I thought it'd be an interesting experiment to see what would happen if I stopped wearing barefoot shoes. So unsure whether my feet would even fit into regular shoes, Loretta and I went shoe shopping or shoe trying and it seemed as long as I wore half a shoe size bigger and the front toe area was made of mesh, we are good to go. So with this newfound information, I did what we always do, headed home and found a pair for half the price online. So here they are, a brand new pair of Nike Air Max 90s with uh, some minor defects. <sighs> Had these shoes about seven years ago and I remember saying that they felt like having clouds on your feet so I'm excited to try these on. <clears throat> not quite as flexible as barefoot shoes. Also let's not forget the magic air bubble. I've got something very important to tell you. Nike Air is actually the air of our very best athletes. Right, let's try these puppies on. First impressions, they do feel pretty comfy. They look really narrow to me when I look down because I guess I'm so used to looking down and seeing a wide barefoot shoe. Because of the raised heel, I kind of feel like I'm almost on my tiptoes standing in them. So it's gonna be interesting to see over the next 30 days if that causes me any pain or discomfort or if my body just gets used to it. With my new kicks on, I head straight out the door to explore what the world was like, marching around elevated by plastic bubbles full of 90s sports stars air. To be honest, Honest, initially it felt good, but much like my antics in the bedroom, the moment was short-lived. One thing I've really noticed about wearing regular shoes is how amazing it is when you take them off. <sighs> but here some of you probably thinking, what is the point of the challenge? Why have you even started this? Well it all started when I saw my friend Chevron Shares post his video about the dark side of barefoot shoes. I say friend, he's uh, responded to a few comments I've left on his video. But basically in the video he says he wears barefoot shoes 80% of the time and regular shoes like 20% of the time and I thought, all right. Regular shoes do look a lot better than barefoot shoes, let's be honest. And secondly, and probably more importantly, since moving to Chester quite a few months ago, I've started to feel some kind of foot pain when I'm in my barefoot shoes. I think this is due to living in a city and being on concrete flooring all the time, which is definitely not ideal. So I basically wanted to see if these magic cushion shoes would maybe help relieve some of that foot pain. But mostly I, I just wanted to wear some Nikes again. So far it's going well, but still got quite a way to go. The rest of the week was a breeze. Apart from my feet feeling a little sore due to the narrow toe box, I found that this was becoming my new normal. And maybe barefoot shoes did not make as much difference as I once thought. So it's day nine of the challenge and I've started experiencing pretty bad knee pain and I'm pretty confident it's from wearing the shoes. So reluctantly, I'm gonna have to throw in the towel. So if you haven't seen my previous barefoot shoe video, it probably makes sense to explain why I started wearing barefoot shoes in the first place. So during the pandemic, I ended up getting stuck in Bali for seven months. I know, unlucky me. For the entire seven months, I didn't wear any shoes because I was in Bali. When I got home and started wearing regular shoes, my feet could barely fit into them. They really hurt and I started experiencing knee pain. And then one day, one of my friends told me about barefoot shoes. My knee and foot pain instantly went away and I haven't looked back since. Well, apart from making this video. So what have I learned from my nine days not wearing barefoot shoes? I learned that the nagging pain from the restricted toe box and the tight fitting shoes actually fades pretty fast. And within a couple of days, the shoes actually feel really comfortable. I actually find it pretty difficult to walk in these shoes and I've stumbled and tripped more times in the last nine days than I care to imagine. I assume this is due to loss of connectivity with the ground due to the raised heel and insole. I also filmed a side-by-side -side comparison. So we could have a closer look at the difference in the body's alignment in the shoes. Apart from being an inch and a half taller, thank you Nike Air Bubbles, you can see that my weight has shifted forward and because of this, when I was walking, my weight shifted onto my toes. And maybe walking like this is what is causing my knee pain. With so much information available today, it can be very difficult and overwhelming to know who to listen to. There'll be one specialist telling you that barefoot shoes are the best thing that have ever been invented and then there'll be another specialist telling you barefoot shoes give you cancer. In my humble opinion, from a health and longevity standpoint, barefoot shoes seem to make the most sense to me. I wanted to make this video to really test my beliefs and see what my experience would be. I've been wearing barefoot shoes for so long that maybe I'm a bit delusional and regular shoes aren't as bad as I thought they were. And until yesterday, I'd completely forgotten that knee pain was the reason that I started wearing barefoot shoes in the first place. I will probably still wear my Nikes on occasions where I don't have to walk much. I mean, 
I have paid for them, but I'm just going to have to accept that 90% of the time, my footwear cannot be filled with famous sports stars air. So that's going to be it for another video. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this video where I wore toe spaces for 30 days, or that time I walked around Germany with no shoes on for some reason. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.